Stacey Simmons is here along with Ebro in the morning. Welcome to you both. First of all, just let me say to you, your father, Reverend Run of Run DMC, helped provide the soundtrack to my youth as far as high school goes. It's like like that. you know, and, and that's the, the way it is. Yo, you know, I had to rock the hat, y'all. So you know, I just want to just get that out there early, uh, and you be sure to let him know that. For sure. But tell us, just how, what is it like growing up, the son of this? This man was legendary. Right. Um. I mean, of course, you know, that's my dad. So I'm, I'm thankful to have like a great dad, just in general, okay. especially him being in the world that he's in. Never too busy for us, but you know, with his legacy legacy and everything, it's like an incredible thing to watch and, you know, understand it as you get older. When did you realize your father <laughs> was Run, Reverend, now Reverend Run of Run DMC? You know what? It's just like, as you grow up, you just kind of know, you know, it's like you go to shows and you just see it. You know, I traveled to like Germany and London and all these places with him when I was very small. Can't even remember it, but you grow up knowing. You're in the music industry now. Mm -hmm. That wasn't too big of a leap, right? Knowing that you were going to be going in that path. When did you decide this is what I wanted to I do? I was around 14 years old, and I was coming. I was going into high school, and I just had little things that I wanted to say. So it was therapeutic at that point. I didn't even want anybody to know I was doing it. I was just writing in my room, and I showed my friends, and they were like, "You should put this out. You know, people should hear this." So I just went about it by myself. I was like, "Okay, let me see what people think," and they took to it well. And that's when I just started putting out things on my own. And my dad was surprised, like, you know, whoa, you know, you're doing your thing. What advice did he give you when you, you knew that this was going to be something when I, 22? Obviously? When I was, like, that young, uh, I was kind of, like, stubborn toward it. I was like, I don't want any advice. You know, I know what I'm doing. I know how I want to go about it. So now that I'm 19 going on 20, I'm like, okay, I understand the advantage to having his, his advice, you know? So now that I've been older, it's like, okay, I understand what it means to get advice from him. Now, who do you listen to? Like, who do you mm. yourself listen to? I'm, I'm really all over the place. Whether it's older, it could be like Tribe, it could be Sade, or I'll listen to new things, like, you know, like a Rich Gang or a Kendrick Lamar. I'm really like very versatile, so, um. That's kind of how I grew up. All right, we're going to get to your single and what else is going on with you, but yeah. I want to bring Ebro in to yeah. talk a little bit about the concert. Yeah, December up. 19th, Barclay Center. It was a, it's a family thing that we put together with Hot 97 WBLS where, you know, we're bringing two generations together. That's kind of what the brands are all about. We're a family, and we wanted to invite families out, and that's why we have Diggy and Run DMC. You know, Diggy and Run, his first time performing with his father. We also have LL Cool J. We just announced K. Michelle. Mm. So, you know, Lecrae, which has had the number one hip hop album in the country for three weeks in a row. Right. So we got a, we got a dope show at Barclay. Tickets at Ticketmaster.com. We're going to put that information up, but I want to talk a little bit about you because you're hugely popular here Thank you. in the area. But you have an interesting story. You used to be in management yeah. and then decided to switch to on air. Yeah. Tell me about the decision. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know. I've been in radio since 1990. I started when I was 15 years old. I was a kid too. So I actually started out DJ and being on the air and then went to management and then when we made some transitions at Hot 97 they asked me if I wanted to you know do this for the next phase of my life and I've been at Emmis you know with Hot 97 WBLS for the last 12 years so you know they invited me back with over the arms to be on the morning show so most outrageous guest you've ever had on your show or moment even just <laughs> man listen I, I couldn't even begin to rank that we've had everything from you know uh, did the DMXs of the world, you know what I mean, to, you know, uh, you know, people, you know, hell, we've had uh, a lot of things at Hot 97, so. Was it easy for you to transition back after having dealt with talent yeah, it's and actually, personalities? It's actually, and... um, for me anyway, because I grew up doing on air, um, it's actually very second nature for me. You know, the uh, dealing with the office and, you know, dealing with managing people. I love doing that. I love helping people become great. I love being a part of that support system as well, but also putting together a program, connecting with the audience and being on the front lines is something I love too. So, you know, fortunately, I've been blessed to be able to do both. Diggy. All right, so tell us about your single. You're busy, man. You're like all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I have a new single called Ain't About To Do. It's featuring French Montana. I have an EP coming out. It's going to be out like the top of January. So all those songs are done, so that'll be coming out. It's and exciting. You're, you're also up in Harlem on December the 20th. Yeah, I'll be at the Apollo, uh, the legendary Apollo Theater, December 20th, the day after Barclays. So it, it's going to be a fun New York time. Got to tell you, first impressions are you're grounded. You don't seem like Thank any you. sort of star kid. You know, I Thank don't you. get a an ounce of that. What keeps you grounded like this? I mean, I say the people around me, you know, they, they keep me level headed and they just let me know or just really make me feel like myself. You know, they don't, you know, try to gas my head up too big or anything like that. I just stay who I am. All right. So I have to ask you this or else I'd get shot. Favorite <laughs> Run DMC song? Song, Rockbox. 
Really? Yeah. Well, just for the <laughs> fact that, like, that's always impacted me. Like, like I'm a, I love performance. You know, I love being on stage. Like, that's really what I love to do. So, seeing that song live mm. is like chilling. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 so I'd say rock box. Any nerves at all about performing with your dad? Not right now. I mean, <laughs> not you, right you know, now. I've, I've had, I've had some, you know, big shows I've done, and I know leading up to it. I've kind of just been focused on the rehearsal part, um, but when you get to the stage, you know, you feel what you feel, and it comes off you once you get on stage. Yo, his dad, though, his dad's energy, <laughs> right? It's something, it's still Ten. to this day. I, I, a lot of people have never experienced Run DMC. I experienced it in 1985 for the first time mm. when I was a kid. <laughs> but Run still has that for real. thing, you know? Really? For real. And you better be able to keep up. <laughs> man, Yo, listen. you better be able to keep up. Listen, I'm a, I'm a student, man, still. Like, I ain't even tripping. I've seen them a couple times recently, and they... They, he still, he got, still it. got it. He still DMC got it. DMC won. They still got it. When you have talent, it stays with you. E, what's your favorite Run DMC song? My favorite Run DMC song would probably have to be Perfection. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I really like Perfection. That was, you know, I mean, uh, that album, Raising Hell, was, you know. Uh, oh, my goodness. It was a great album. You know? <laughs> it was like, you know. It was, it was life-changing for me. And just even, he brought up Rockbox, but just the merging of rock and roll and and beats at that time still to this day is something that people well, they started that. Yeah, mean, you know, man. And, and and as much as they get all of the credit that they deserve i still don't think they get enough that's right know, for uh, marrying all of that because it's the foundation of what hip-hop is now. and really that's why we're doing this show right because it all comes full circle right mm -hmm. and you know being able to bring families together right before the holiday for a good party and a positive time is what we're trying to do all right just in case you were wondering this beat is my recital I, I think, think it's, it's very vital, vital yes. to rock around. Yes. That's right. On time. Here we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right.